I'll assume you can follow the tab or the standard notation from the beginning of this video well enough that you can learn the notes on your own. So rather than going note by note, we're gonna go phrase by phrase, talk about fingerings, chord shapes, and special guitar techniques. If you do need some help reading tab, I've got a video on that topic, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. Also in the description, you'll find a link for ordering a PDF of this arrangement. I'm playing this arrangement finger style, and as I play, I'm paying attention to the chords above the music because that's helping me find good fingerings. We start off with a hammer on from D to E on the fourth string. I recommend playing that hammer on with your second finger, and you'll find out why in just a little bit. We have a melody over partial chords. Partial G chord here. Partial D chord right here. Matter of fact, it's only two notes of a D chord. And a partial C chord. Make sure you keep that melody nice and snappy. We have these dotted eighth, sixteenth note figures. Do, 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 do. That's going to happen throughout this arrangement and keep those rhythms nice and sharp. Pick up to measure three. We have the same hammer on as you did at the beginning. D to E. And again, hammer on with your second finger, because what you're going to do while you're playing your G melody note that repeats with your bass notes, you're going to hammer on and then slide that second finger up to the fifth fret on the fourth string. So in beat one of measure three, you're playing two of the same note. You're playing an open G on the third string and a G on the fourth string, fifth fret. Now, while you're playing those repeated G's in the melody, you're going to use the second finger for each of these notes on the bass and just slide down for G, F sharp on the fourth fret, E on the second fret. So you're going to hammer on, slide, all with the same finger. And with the melody on top of that, it sounds pretty cool. Then we have some three open notes, then a partial C chord with the melody on the first string, and a partial G chord with the melody on the second string, that D note, and play that D note with your fourth finger. Pick up to measure five, we have partial C chord with the melody on string one, fourth finger on the D, and then a partial G chord with melody on string two. Again, play that D with your fourth finger. And then in measure six, we have a pull off in the melody. We're pulling off from C to B. Underneath that, we have this moving bass line. From A, A, B, C. Play that B with your first finger. It's going to make it easier to get to the partial C chord on beat three. Now the trick is to be able to do the pull off melody and that bass line at the same time. And that takes a little bit of practice. So play it slowly at first. And as you get used to the timing of it, just start to play it a little faster and a little faster. Pick up to measure seven, we have that same hammer on that we've had at the beginning from D to E. And then we have a melody over a partial G chord and our melodies on string three with those snappy rhythms. So partial G chord, melody over partial C chord, melodies on string one. And what we're doing there on beat four is you're going to play your first finger on that D, second fret, third, second string, third fret, and your second finger is going to be on the third string, fourth fret, B. The easiest way to get there is the beat before on that partial C chord. You've got your first finger on the C, first fret, second string. Just slide your first finger over to the D, same string, slide over and put your second finger down on that B 
and then we have two open notes and a partial D chord and a partial G chord. Let me back it up and do those last couple measures so you can hear that in context. Slide over. Pick up to measure nine. We've got this melody with the snappy dotted eighth sixteenth note figures. Underneath that we have this moving bass line, B on string five, then a couple open strings, and then C, C, G. So our strings there are fifth string for the B, then open fourth string for D, third string G, back to D, and then fifth string C, C, and then the low G. Trick here is to be able to play this, Over that bass line and that takes some practice I recommend first practicing it without rhythm don't put those 16th note rhythms in play it as slowly as you need to to get the coordination down and once you've got that put add the rhythm back in gradually speed it up. Pick up to measure 11, it's the exact same music as measures 3 and 4 with one exception. The rhythm is a little different. But you're still doing a hammer-on to the E on the second uh, fret of the fourth string and sliding it up to do that little slidey bass line just like you did before. The only difference between measures 11 and 12 and measures 3 and 4 is the rhythm in the melody. In measure three, we have straight quarter notes. In measure 11 on beat two, we have a dotted eighth sixteenth. That's the only difference. And then the rest of this measure is the same as measures three and four. Partial C chord with melody on string one and partial G chord with melody on string two. Measure 13 through 16 with the pickup, it's the exact same music as measures five through eight. So melody with a partial C chord, partial G chord, and here's our pull-off melody with the bass line. Make sure you play your B with finger one, finger one here, snappy rhythms and just like before you're going to slide your first finger over to the D and the B and then measure 17 through the end it's the exact same as the four measures you just played except we're going to slow down in some spots and hold in some spots Now in measure 18, we have that pull-off rhythm, or that pull-off melody with the bass line. Notice there's a retard marking written under beat two. That just means you're gonna be slowing down. Slow, slow down there. And we have a fermata marking written above this partial C chord. Fermata means you're gonna hold that as long as you like. So if I go back to measure 17, Slow down here and then hold this. And next it's marked slower. So of course we're gonna play slower. Slide over. And there's a fermata over this last partial G chord. So hold this as long as you like. 
And that was Lock Loman for Solo Guitar. Have fun with this, and don't forget to check the description to see where you can order the PDF. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with more guitar tips and arrangements. Thank you.